this is something I think often Muslims uh, are unaware of. Well, at least most Muslims are unaware of is that there were there's a minority um, or was a minority faction among the Muslims in the early period, and there's still some Muslims today who actually believe that the hadith with respect to the return of Isa bin Maryam and the Masih al-Dajjal, first and foremost, are false, right? Uh, that, that there are still some Muslims who actually believe that, right, today, extreme minority of them, right? You know, but there, it goes back, you know, to early period as well. You know, there are some who say, that, okay, well, the Dajjal, if he does come, um, that uh, any powers that he apparently has actually won't be miraculous powers, right? There are scholars who actually help the view. Ibn Hazm al-Zahiri is reported to actually help this view. Uh, some of the a minority of the Mu'tazira had this view. Uh, in other words, they say the Dajjal is real, but his powers are not, right? The majority of our, our, our scholars uh, and in the mainstream beliefs of overall majority of our theologians throughout Muslim history have had the view that, yes, no, no, he's both real and he will have miraculous powers on top of that, you know, because we learned, okay, that he give command to the skies to rain, it will rain, he will give command to the earth to grow, and it will grow. But the opposite as well, that he get the power to withhold rain, the power to turn land into desert. Uh, so uh, there is this it's talk about a young man that uh, he will kill and slice him in half and then stand between his two parts of his body and then uh, give a one, uh, you sort of wave his hand and then the body will be revived. And it said that, you know, this particular young man, according to some narrations, is Al Khidr, uh, alayhi salam. Um, uh, or a belief that some had, you know, that, that he would be, in other words, signs of some type of miraculous power that he has. But, but to know the real reason I mentioned the opinion about those who believe that his powers would not, would not be miraculous is that there is rather the possibility that some of his powers that he would utilize would not be, um, would not come from rather, we say, uh, a divine source, uh, you know, as we, understand it, you know, that, that he won't necessarily need to utilize some type of miraculous power, right? But rather, uh, there are other tools, especially in the type of world we live in today, where um, you can manipulate and you can deceive, you can create fake videos. Right. And so, the by that argument doesn't need miraculous powers because he can utilize this technology, which seems miraculous, but it's not, right. it's man-made, yeah. Right, exactly. Right. So, so Allah, I don't know. I mean, but, but the whole point is just that, you know, um, you know, there's this opinion. And yeah, yeah. even without miraculous powers, there are ways to manipulate, there are ways to deceive. Yeah, yeah. Now, one of the hadiths of the Prophet mentions that, that uh, the Dijal has what we call sort of uh, intelligent tricks or shubuhat that he utilizes against his victims, right? Um, and actually, matter of fact, I think the next slide actually is, is I'll come back to this one, uh, see if I can find that, that hadith. Uh, uh, yeah, this is the hadith. So in this hadith, it says, uh, whoever hears of the Dajjal should keep his distance because a person will come to, come to follow him, thinking him to be truthful in light of the intelligent tricks he is sent with. Right. Uh, another version of the hadith says, you know, that whoever hears of the Dajjal to keep one's distance, um, a person will come to the to the Dajjal to challenge him, thinking that he himself, the challenger, is a believer, you know. But then we actually end up following the Dajjal because because uh, of the shubahat, right? You know. Oh. So in other words, there's an appeal to uh, uh, the intellect, right? There's an appeal, great appeal that, that he does to the intellect. You know. Of course, we know how the Dajjal can appeal to the shahawat, or sort of the lower desires, the passions of the human being. Right? Everyone, you know. I mean, when when you're you know, convinced of something when you are manipulated by your lower passions, most people know and understand, okay, well, I know I shouldn't be doing that. This is wrong, right? You know, but I'm so weak. I'm too weak to, and so I could succumb to my desires, right? But when it comes to matters of intelligence, uh, one, people don't like to think of themselves as being uh, docile or you know, gullible. gullible. Who, who wants to? Gullible. Who wants to be thought of as gullible? Uh, right. Is it credulous. Uh, right. Uh, it's not flattering to our pride, is it? Right. Right. Not at all. Not at all. I remember growing up, like in, in the in, in here in the U.S., 
you know, politicians will all, always say, you know, the Americans are the most educated people in the world. America, Americans are the most powerful country on the planet. And, and of course, it stroke people's egos. Like, yeah, we're no one's more educated, more intelligent than we are. But the average American only knows one language, right? So, mm. I mean, so how intelligent can you possibly be if you only want know one language to begin with? How much, how cultured can you be? I mean, the average American um, finds it difficult to find any other place on the map in the world outside of the mm. United States, you know, yeah. but even sometimes even within the United States, right? So, so there is a, it's a sort of a trick that, you know, th it doesn't require the Dajjal to, to do that, you know, but, but yeah, but typically we think of ourselves, you know, I'm, 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 uh, someone who cannot be duped. I, I'm, I'm not gullible. You can't trick me, you know, but I've been tricked before. I, I feel, believe I've been brainwashed before. Right, perhaps on multiple occasions, right? And, and I'm just being honest about that, you know. So, so if I've been uh, brainwashed, I'm quite sure, and I've seen a lot of other people have been brainwashed, you know, brainwashed. But this is one of his most important. important we will be tricked uh, globally. We were told once, you know, the <clears throat> by by the Western leadership that Iraq, you know, possessed weapons yes. of mass destruction. Um, we were told in Britain that Saddam Hussein represents an imminent military threat to Britain. You know, within mm -hmm. 45 minutes, he could attack us. Uh, all this was yeah. lies. I mean, now know this and everyone accepts they were lies, but everyone believed them or well, nearly yeah. everyone believed them. And yet th th these were tricks because yeah. the people who are propagating them didn't have the evidence, obviously didn't exist. So somewhere someone was tricking us to, into going to war on, beh on behest of some other reasons, which we won't go into. Yeah. Right, right. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that definitely one of those examples. And, and I'm actually going to refer later on to uh, some of the organizations which um, contributed or at least believed to have contributed to that particular deception. Right. You know, so and I think it's important for us to actually keep our eyes on those same type of those same organiza organizations. Uh, I mean, we were just tricked, yeah, I would say, during COVID as well as another thing. You know, I think it's OK for us to mention COVID on YouTube now because I mean, they've changed, at least for now, maybe in another year, they may change their policy again. But we saw we went through that period where you couldn't even mention anything negative about COVID and negative about the vaccine. Um, you can't talk about, you know, whether or not people have been injured by the vac by the vaccine. Uh, we couldn't we couldn't say anything about the origins of COVID. Uh, the only narrative we're allowed to actually even believe was one uh, about a, a, a the, the the wet market and eating bat soup, right? And they were told, you know, <laughs> uh, <bat soup. laughs> right, right, yeah. That was the only narrative we were told. Oh, it started in a wet market, you know. It just started in a yeah, bag. Yeah. It started in the yeah. wet market, you know. So. And people were censored in the process of that, right? You know, mm -hmm. and, and then people were lied about with respect to even issues of efficacy and you know, of the of the vaccine, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so you get, we 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 know. I mean, what what happened? So uh, I, I don't. This is going off subject slightly, but I, I just to, to put this in the timestamp. I mean, we were told by our mm -hmm. Home Secretary here, who's just been fired, sacked mm -hmm. uh, by our Prime Minister. Uh, that the uh, the pro Palestinian marches uh, I went on one on Saturday mm -hmm. were um, hate marches. That mm -hmm. what motivated us was pure hatred. Right. And mm -hmm. This was such a, a slander and a lie mm -hmm. because you know I was there. It was it was almost a family occasion. The mothers with their children. Mm -hmm. Everyone was very respectful, good humoured. Everyone cared passionately for the killings that are taking place. There was no hatred at all, and right. and yet this is the dominant narrative in mm -hmm. in the media and. Yeah. Um, it, it, and a lot of people will believe it because that's all they're going to hear from the respectable legacy media, so to speak. And it's very hurtful. I found it very hurtful because that wasn't what motivated us at all. And it was just simply a lie yeah. and a very bare faced one. But that, that's that's pretty raw and ongoing. Yeah, actually. yeah I, don't, I actually don't think that that's, that's off topic. I think it is right. germane to the topic, right? You know, your example that you give, you know, I, I saw uh, a headline yesterday which said, the majority of Americans, they took a poll of Americans and the majority of, of Americans have a positive viewpoint of Netanyahu. And I was like, whoa, that's really interesting, right? You know, you know, how could that possibly happen, right? Mm -hmm. You see, not mm -hmm. saying that, you know, you should hate somebody simply because the TV made you hate, but it shows you how the TV can make you love somebody as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, among other things, right? So, so again, so, so that is, I would say this is probably most important uh, uh, power, you know, is a power mm -hmm. of of deception, right? That he has, you know. But there's these other things that we learn from the Hadith of the Prophet, so like, so with regard to 
the problems of the Dajjal, you know. So, so what we and, and I wanted to talk about the issue of Pharaoh too, right? Because mm -hmm. it's interesting that in the Quran that the story of Moses and Pharaoh is the most oft repeated story in the Quran. Really? And the Quran being the final mm -hmm. revelation uh, of, 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 you know, from God to humanity, then it, it's as if God is trying to send a message to the rest of us that from this time, from the time of revelation of this book, until God inherits the earth and all there upon the earth, your most significant threat will be uh, government, will be mm -hmm. government tyranny, right? You know, at least that's the way I read it personally. Right? So that's one, well, that's one way you can read it. Right? So, 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 so fundamentally, when we look at the story that Pharaoh, you know, he had his political apparatus, you know, he had a military apparatus, he had economic, and he had his propaganda wing, you know, he had his, his magicians, right? He had his magicians, he had his, you know, Harun, you know, and, and, you know, and Haman, you know, the military, the, the, the Mason, you had these, these people who are building up uh, the civilization in order to present the idea that this individual actually is truly God, right? You know, and this civilization is God-like, right? And, um, and so it's as if like Pharaoh is the archetype, right? Uh -huh. Of all, you know, tyrants, right? Or true tyrants until the end of time, I would say, right? So, um, so, so, but then you see again, this consolidation, right? You know, similar consolidation. So he has the consolidation in the media is happening, right? As well, right? Our media, as a matter of fact, um, there's a slide here I have about the media. Okay. So, so this is, you know, our media, this media consolidation, right? And this is somewhat, a, some, somewhat old, um, um, picture, you know, which sort of summarizes like 90% of, of the media that people, they consume, right? It, outside, of course, alternative media uh, options, which is good to see that alternative it's media like- Yeah, it's an important caveat because because alternative yeah. media is now a major, major source of news, like Twitter, uh, and yeah. that's another, as we come back to that point, but- Yeah, yeah, right. Mainstream, uh, traditional legacy media, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. the point is this, like the, you know, and, and I totally agree there because like I think that alter social media, alternative media like your channel and, and others, you know, well, you're not necessarily, you know, media because you're teaching, right, educational, right? But it's, if you think of it as alternative media as well, long form media, yeah. uh, that that this definitely is, it poses a major challenge, right, to the mm -hmm. legacy media, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but to see the level of consolidation happening, that in itself should at least make our, antenna, our antennas go up, you know, and say, okay, well, why are they consolidating? Yeah? Why are so many media outlets um, you know, sort of, why do they have the same message? Why do they have the same messaging? Why are they trying to prevent or shut down alternative voices? You know, so if we were to come back, for instance, to some of the things we were speaking about earlier, why were they, um, why were they censoring the voices of actual scientists and doctors during the COVID mm -hmm. lockdown? You know, those doctors, legitimate doctors from Stanford and, and other places, it's like, well, they said they didn't believe that the lockdowns were the right way. They're not going to do anything. You know, it's not the wisest thing to do. You know, but said, no, 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 no. we're not going to, we have to undermine and, and challenge and we have to discredit these people, right? And we only want one narrative, right? So the media stepped in, you know, politicians, uh, Hollywood actors and actresses, uh, all of them got involved on the push to to actually, okay, do your part, you know, and then also, so not only to stay at home, but do your part and, you know, getting vaccinated, do your part, right? You know, uh, with something, a new type of technology, a new, new type of vaccine, new type of technology had not been tested, it didn't have any long-term, any long-term, um, um, uh, you, you know, so studies on it, and then they told us, that, oh, no, no, we accelerated the studies, right? He said, well, how can you accelerate time, right? <laughs> you know, how can you have long-term studies, you know, and, you know, and long time hasn't passed yet, right? But again, mm -hmm. but a lot of people went along with this, and unfortunately, many Muslims did too. So, so, so we see consolidation. So in the media, is this one place, right? You know, and, and if anything, uh, it's one of the most important places to have power, you know, because like, um, it was like Malcolm X, you know, one of his statements, you know, the media is the most powerful entity on earth. 
They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent, and that's power because they control the minds of the masses. I mean, the, 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 this, this that quote you just read out is 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 never been more timely. I think I don't know yeah. if it was timely in Malcolm X's day, but now it, it really uh, is very very prescient and uh, powerfully spoken. Um, Indeed, totally, totally, absolutely, absolutely. Here's another quote from him. He says, uh, "If you're not careful, the newspapers will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing." Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Prescient, right?